chapter 19. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. You shall fear every man his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Turn you not unto idols. Turn you not unto the idols. Nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, you shall offer it that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it, and on the morrow, if aught remain until the third day, it shall be burnt with fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is a vile thing, it shall not be accepted. But every one that eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the holy thing of the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from his people. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corner of your field, neither shall you gather the gleaning of your harvest. And you shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, neither shall you deal falsely, nor lie one to another. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, so that you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not abide with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. You shall not respect the person of the poor, nor favor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go up and down as a talebearer among your people, neither shall you stand idly by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your neighbor in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle gender with a diverse kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed. Neither, sh neither shall there come upon you a garment of two kinds of stuff mingled together. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman, that is a bondmaid, designated for a man, and not at all redeemed, nor was freedom given her, there shall be inquisition. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And he shall bring his forfeit unto the Lord, unto the door of the tent of meeting, even a ram for a guilt offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned. He shall be forgiven for his sin, which he has sinned. And when you shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as forbidden. Three years shall it be as forbidden unto you. It shall not be eaten. And in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy, for giving praise unto the Lord. But in the fifth year may you eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you more richly the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. You shall, you shall not eat with the blood, neither shall you practice divination nor soothsaying. You shall... Not round the corners of your heads, neither shut you mar the corners of your beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor imprint any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Profane not your daughter to make her a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry, and the land become full of lewdness. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Turn you not unto the ghosts nor unto familiar spirits, seek them not out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shalt rise up before the hoary head, and honor the face of the old man, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. The stranger that sojourns with you shall be unto you as the homeborn among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. 
you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. In meat yard, or weight, or in measure, just balances, just weights, a just epoch, and a just hen shall you have. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And you shall observe all my statutes, and all mine ordinances, and do them. I am the Lord. All right, let's go back up to verse 1, and we once again are just continuing from the last chapter as Moses is instructed to speak to the children of Israel. That's basically everybody, all those that come forth from or are the descendants of Israel who had the 12 sons. Um, the and two tribes being of Joseph. But we are, uh, and that would be for the whole, and the those that are dispersed in all the earth. Of course, these are everyone, everybody who faces the adverse one or the life's adversity, and then we find out that everybody is subject to that at any given moment in time. One could find out, but we, this last chapter, dealt with the nakedness, and the nakedness is to talk about and explain expose somebody in their shortcomings, let us say, or to uh, cause it to be known and to uncover that to others so that they might look to see, see them in their shortcomings or in their, in their sin, so to speak, as well as the other as we take it to that point that, you know, we finally... Uh, uh, the it's it's an overall thing. One is just about the same as the other as to to uncover somebody in their nakedness as as to expose them in the flesh and in a uh, shameful way or to act shamefully according to them. We'll find out the Lord commanded you not to do this and about pretty much every situation uh, to those that are relative to you because we'll find out in the long run. Uh, uh, the relativeness uh, will only diminish you in that same sense. So we're going to pick it up here in verse 1 and basically in a continuance of these instructions to the congregation as we see. Verse 1, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, So once again, uh, Hashem, the existing one, or the one that exists, uh, doesn't need to be present, we find out. Sooner or later, uh, he gets around to you. In other words, time, time in, in all ways. You know, sometimes the Lord don't act instantly to punish us. Sometimes he does, but we find sometimes he's slow to anger. He, he's, he, he likes to uh, see if you're going to turn from your way first. But sooner or later... Everything we do, my friends, shows up in society or shows up somehow. Uh, Moses is the one who is drawn out. He is the one who is saved by Hashem. Two, speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Speak unto all the congregation. So these are the words that was given to Moses to speak unto uh, these congregation, those that gather, those that uh, come from the congregation, is basically um, those that have come together as a purpose. They kind of like have a they have a purpose. Uh, they have come together or are joined together, you might say, in, in these this understandings and say unto them, "You shall be holy. You shall be, and holy is to be separated." sanctified you shall have a purpose uh, for I the Lord your God am holy and for Hashem the existing one of of your strength your power and it's really very simple sooner or later my friend if we want the world to be perfect we ourselves also have to separate that and be perfect ourselves and then and in this manner is how we accomplish the task three you shall fear every man his mother and his father and you shall keep my sabbaths i am the lord your god you shall fear every man his mother that's uh 
one thing is it is the one who give birth to you and it is the reflection of your father's understanding and father is the one whom seed and whose shum you shall carry forth you shall keep my sabbaths and my sabbaths are these days not only the once a week sabbath but we'll find out the festivals as well as the lord declared uh, as sabbaths you shall keep i am the lord your god uh, as we'll find out, the Lord said, You will remember me. For turn you not unto the idols, nor take me to yourselves, molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Turn you not unto idols. Idols, just about anything you can fall down to or give worship to that's not uh, the Lord. And it's really a very simple thing. Um, the, we, uh, from the, the and idols things that are made by men things that are made by as we'll find out you sh nor make to yourselves these molten gods these things that are formed up somehow somebody else made it somebody else come up with it we'll find out in the end my friend uh, God gave all the other nations those things to worship and to you he said don't do it Five, and when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, you shall offer it that you may be accepted. And when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings, these things that are going to keep the peace, these things that are, that are going to keep uh, good health, you, you'll make these offerings unto the Lord. You shall offer it that it may be accepted. You're going to be the one that brings it down, not somebody else going to get get before you. Now, there's somebody else that has the place to present it and make it all make sense. We're going to get back to the law with it. Now, it shall be eaten the same day, and it shall be consumed that same day, and that understanding you offer it, uh, it it's consumed on the morrow. You, you realize that you're the one that done it, and you paid the price. You've accepted that, and... And on the morrow, that's, of course, that's that well, you've witnessed it to finish consuming it. And if anything remained to the third day, of course, this completes that understanding that uh, the third day, to make it strong, it shall be burnt with fire. And it shall be burnt on the fire. It's destroyed with the judgment. Seven. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is a vile thing. It shall not be accepted. So if you eat, t partake of it any, at all on the third day, uh, it becomes a vile thing it, because it should be, have been destroyed. It should have been gone in the fact that you knew what you did wrong that, uh, and you understand it was a violation and uh, the fact that you sh it should have been done away with right then. But now t to uh, partake of it or to do it again, it's, it's, it takes away the first two days, you might say, all that was for nothing. But everyone that ate, but everyone that eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the holy thing of the Lord, and thus so shall be cut off from his people. But everyone that eats of it, or everyone that eats it shall bear his iniquity. You're going to bear your perversion, because you, um, you, you were supposed to have been sorry for what you'd done, and you're not. You profaned the holy thing of the Lord. You've forgotten about your contract. You've forgotten about what you said you would do. And that soul shall be cut off from his people. To be cut off is kind of like treated like you're dead. Uh, to uh, just be given up over to the dead. And that's basically what it was. What was done. Nine. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corner of your field, neither shut you gather the gleaning of your harvest. Uh, we're kind of uh, going to change uh, subjects here uh, with the reaping of a harvest. Uh, when you reap the harvest of your land, of course, well, this is to gather your crops in. You shall not wholly reap the corner of your field. You don't gather everything. You shall gather the... Neither shall you gather the gleaning of your harvest. And the gleaning is that few pieces that fall to the ground. Uh, a few pieces here and there that stand in the corners of it. Uh, maybe you missed a roll here and there. Uh, the Lord says you got to leave those things. 
10, And you shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And we'll find out as well that from the fruit, that is things that bear fruit in the earth, uh, you shall not gather the fallen fruit. You shall not glean your vineyard after the, after the pickers have gone through. The, those few things the pickers have left behind. Um, as they were commanded to leave a handful or two as well. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. And you'll leave them as well. Uh, for those that are poor. Those that don't have nothing. And they should be freely invited to, to come. I am the Lord your God. We'll find out the Lord give you everything. When you was born in this earth, you had nothing. Uh, you was naked and bare. Eleven, you shall not steal, neither shall you deal falsely, nor lie one to another. You shall not steal, as we find. We, these are the basic commandments that everybody understands within themselves to steal. Uh, take something that don't belong to you. Of course, we don't want others taking what don't belong to them from us. Uh, you shouldn't deal falsely. We don't want other people. We don't want to deal falsely with other people uh, unless other people start to deal falsely with us. Don't lie to people. It's a very simple thing. Don't go around. You don't have to lie around here to have friends. It's really a simple thing. Twelve. You shall not swear by my name falsely so that you profane the name of the, your God. I am the Lord. You shall not swear by my name falsely. And this and <clears throat> to uh, say you're going to do something and, and mention the Shem uh, of Hashem, the, the presence uh, being as a witness so that you profane that, that name, that Shem of your God as if he's not going to hold you accountable. Uh, to and to profane it is like just to make it have no effect. That we we'll talk about the covenant there. When we talk about that Shem because uh, that's that's the, what where who you got the covenant with. Thirteen. You shall not oppress your neighbor nor rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not abide with you all night until the morning. You shall not oppress your neighbor. Uh, there's no reason to treat your neighbor bad. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, uh, sometimes you, the best thing you do is be just be kind to your neighbor, nor rob him, take advantage of him in a, in any way or any circumstances. The wages of a hired servant shall not abide with you all night until the morning. Don't hold the wages of your servant. Go we'll find out it's his bread and butter. If he require it of you, give it. Uh, situations of life vary uh, from individual to individual. 14. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not curse the deaf. You know, uh, to talk about somebody, especially behind their back, when they are in a sense that they can't hear you, the deaf, those that can't hear, uh, you know, it, it is really not a good thing to do. Uh, sometimes we we find we associate in this kind of a, a circle. We'll find out uh, we're subject to just what we do in life. And if you maybe this is the lesson Hashem has for you. Sometimes we must look at things. We don't talk behind other people, or we don't browbeat the deaf, those that can't hear. And maybe they won't do it to us. We don't put stumbling blocks before the blind to trip a blind man. To lay something in his path and to stand idly by while he goes forth to fall. So you might don't know the, uh, you wouldn't want somebody to do that with you. If you didn't have certain abilities, if you was tasked at perception, one might uh, be more easily tripped up. Um, the Lord commanded that the stumbling blocks be removed from the paths. But you shall fear your God. You shall have some reverence and some respect for Hashem. I am the Lord. I, this existing one, 
and Dean basically has understanding of everything that goes on. Sometimes we find, my friend, well, if you set the stumbling block before the blind, you're the blind man when she stumbles. 15. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. You shall not respect the person of the poor, nor favor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not do no unrighteousness in judgment. But, and basically, you know, what the Lord is commanding is to, for you to separate yourself if, for the good purpose. Don't don't choose sides in, in a, a situation just because somebody's rich or somebody's poor because maybe they got, uh, they wear different clothing or in some form have the rights right, wrong's wrong, and period. And that's what the Lord commands, is righteousness in your judgments. 16. You shall not go up and down as tell-bearer among your people, neither shall you stand idly by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not go up and down as a tell-bearer, one that goes around telling these stories about everybody else that you've heard. You know, somebody tells you what to her, that's that's fine. You know, maybe they released it, but let that be about as far as it get, and in a sense, and you should correct them in a, in a sense of what good way to do this is just bring up a positive aspect about the person at that time, and it usually tends to cut it off a little bit. Uh, you shouldn't stand idly by in the blood of your neighbor. You shouldn't just stand by and watch them uh, cut up or carve up your neighbor in a sense uh, in a uh, not that you responsible for your neighbor but to stand idly by while wrong is being done is uh, in a sense wrong itself 17 you shall not hate your brother in your heart you shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him you shall not hate your brother in your heart uh, don't carry a grudge against those, especially those who have a similar understanding as you. Uh, we'll find out they come from one father. We all do. In your heart or within you, uh, carry these grudges for a long time. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. It's, uh, it's so that you don't bear sin because of him. And, we, you know, don't follow along with the crowd just because they're going off to do something. Don't mean you have to. Uh... Tell them why you don't have to. Say, you know, Hashem says that you can't do this. And uh, you shouldn't do this. And I'm not going to be part of it. And and just like that, we we don't become part of the sin. You don't have to sin just because everybody else is doing it. Maybe your neighbor wants you to do something. He don't think it's wrong. But we'll find out sometimes. Hashem says to us inside our heart and tells us the difference. Um, we have the... Everybody at any moment in time can be adverse or become adverse as as to test you sometimes. We, we might think, 18, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall not take vengeance. Um, I don't try to get the old payback. You might say, or bear any grudge against the children of your people, of especially those of your own kind, because we'll find out you, you're just coming against your own house in the long run. You shall love your neighbor. Uh, that's those nations and those peoples that are not maybe not like you. Uh, it's evident because they have their own house, they have their own ways, they have their own understanding. And that's no, there's no problem with these things, uh, we find out. You should love your neighbor, have respect for them. I am the Lord, we'll find out. Hashem has control over everything, He is the existing one. 19. You shall keep my statutes, you shall not let your cattle gender with a diverse kind. You should not sow your field with two kinds of seed, neither shall there come upon you a garment of two kinds of stuff mingled together. You shall keep my statutes, these ordinances, uh, these things declared, you might say. Well, the word is kuchah, means uh, uh, 
these customs after this manner in this and like this uh, basically is what it means uh, according to this and in the in effect that you shall not mingle your cattle you're not going to uh, uh, gender your cattle with a uh, particular kind of uh, and, you know, to try to breed different cattle together in a sense to get some other form of, of flock. And then we take this in any two different ways. Uh, we can take this figuratively and physically. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed uh, by planting in it these two different things that bring forth. Because the one thing it does is sometimes they cross-pollinate in a sense, and one there's no more the seed there that you once had. It will produce a, a, a mingled seed. Neither shall there come upon you a garment of two kinds of stuff mingled together. Uh, and this garment, this outer covering of these witness, these kinds of stuff, these two, because they're mingled together once again in this understanding. Now, there shouldn't be a mingling of these garments or of these things that are sewn. It, it sh it's a very simple thing. We The uh, ordinances of Hashem are straightforward. There is no mingling them in with these other ordinances. 20. And whosoever lies carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, designated for a man, and not at all redeemed, nor was freedom given her, there shall be inquisition. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And then whosoever lies carnally, and that's in a physical sense, uh, uh, with a woman, uh, that is not that is a bondmaid. She's been taken as a servant. We'll find out in the, today's society these things really are not acceptable to sell a person off or into a debt. Uh, in some customs, these things were done. This and uh, the as we'll find out. Uh, this woman here was designated for a man. She was done promised to uh, be married off, and uh, of course there was a time set of her her redemption. Uh, her freedom was to be given her after that point. She was to be married, but there is someone who has taken advantage, or uh, somehow the uh, come into this situation with her. We'll find out. They'll not be put to death. Because she was not free, she was in a bond, that bond position. But there shall be an inquisition. Of course, the King James Version says she will be scorched. No, but there will be question. See, and there will be a punishment down out to just say she will be scorched. Uh, as, as in a sense to uh, already, um, we'll find out the guilt is all automatically given over to the man. He's the one that is the masculine. He's He's supposed to be in control of every situation in the first place. So both really are guilty, but uh, it would be my opinion. Uh, the man should have took the controlled position, 21, and he shall bring his forfeit unto the Lord into the door of the tent of meeting, even a ram for a guilt offering. And he shall bring his forfeit unto the Lord. That's His forfeit is at that uh, guilt offering, that's what a guilt offering is. It's an ashant, is, is offering, because it's what this should be for, is guilt, or that guilt he brought upon her. We don't know the exact situation of the matter, but there will be, would have been a questioning. He shall bring that forfeit unto the Lord, unto the door of the tent of meeting, even a ram for a guilt offering. A ram is one that has exalted himself over the flock, because it represents just that, while one can use their position. Now, one sometimes uses um, uh, their authority. Of course, uh, the Lord gives you the authority, and, and to, you should be doing the right thing. But he should bring his forfeit into the door of the meeting. 22. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin, which he hath sent. And the priest will make atonement for him. And he, it, he's, you know... The, uh, for this sin and this shortcoming, we'll find out that some people have. We might say the uh, the Lord has given you the law. It's for your good to keep you under control and these things he commanded you not to do. 
and these things will be looked as a sin or as a shortcoming unto the Lord. But you can be forgiven if and when you uh, realize, of course, and have accepted the fact that you have a shortcoming and you wish to turn 23. And when you shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as forbidden. Three years shall it be as forbidden unto you, it shall not be eaten. And when you come into the land that you and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, so it, you will come into the land and you will plant these trees for food. You shall count these fruit trees forbidden. Three years. And now it's going to complete the greater understandings we'll find out because it's just a simple witness as we receive and do what the Lord has told us to do as plant these trees, inherit the land. The fruit's going to be counted forbidden. Uh, we'll find out any fruit thereof you can't partake and it, uh, those that is appointed for those that can. 24, and in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy for giving praise unto the Lord. In the fourth year, of course, the fourth is always that portion that separates the it's the work of God in the greater understanding. It's all the fruit, the goodness of it, this that it brings forth shall be holy. Set aside, separated, it's for giving praise, giving thanks, offering it unto the Lord. And these offerings of, uh, of peace offerings, these offerings of, of free will, first fruits, and such as that, 25. But in the fifth year may you eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you more richly the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. But in the fifth year, of course, the fifth is a portion, and uh, that's always that portion of grace and the greater understandings, that you may eat of the fruit. Because, you know, the, the idea is that it was grace you have entered the land. It is grace you have planted the tree. It is grace that you have received the fruit. And everything we get, we find the mercy and the grace of Hashem. And it's so that we can get a, a, a more rich yield. There's more in it. We'll find out in everything you produce and everything you grow. Hashem puts a little something special in it just for you. 26. You shall not eat with the blood. Neither shall you practice divination nor soothsaying. You shall not eat the blood. Now, of course, we talked about this several times. The blood represents the life. And you shall not eat that alive. Neither shall you practice divination or say. Of course, this soothsaying can be looked at any way, my friends. These the soothsaying is somebody who practices talking in pleasant ways to lure or, uh, in a sense, seduce one into doing what they ask or doing what they want you to do. In a sense, one might say to lure... Uh, for usually for personal gain, nah, is a good good way to look at it. And to practice divination is to be a like a sorcerer, somebody who can cast spells. You know, there ain't nobody gonna cast no spells. Twenty-seven. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall you mar the corners of your beard. You shall not round the corners of your heads. Uh, you know, we can take this a long ways. Uh, to round the corners of your heads is to, uh, you know, to to cut it off, to cut off your hair most likely would be a good interpretation of this, or to remove your own glory, or to knock yourself down, or to strike down yourself, or to lessen yourself in any degree. Uh, not that you should boast yourself or, or in any way, but one shouldn't bow, beat yourself up at all anyway. To neither should you mar the corners of your beards, or and in a sense to cut off the the hair of your face uh, to that glory. These things that are made plain, we're going to find out, my friend. In a sense, uh, you should be yourself. Twenty-eight. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, 
uh, just because somebody dies, no sense to injure yourself, uh, as one used to do, like they could possibly take the place of them, and in some kind of sense, we'll find out. Uh, one is for their, uh, responsible for yourself, and the other is responsible for themselves. And this is the way Hashem made it, just for them reasons. Don't imprint any marks upon you. As we'll see today in today's society, uh, a lot of people don't know the laws of Hashem, and they they begin to mark up the flesh. And there's nobody that says you can't. Obviously, you can, but Hashem says you shouldn't do these things. The uh, you, you make yourself a billboard in a sense. Uh, there's no sense in advertising. Uh, oneself, uh, not one should be happy with the way they appear. Twenty nine, profane not your daughter, to make her a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of lewdness. Profane not your daughter. Don't break the contract you have with your daughter and that understanding that she is the pleasantness of your sham to make her a harlot. Make her into that, to turn her into that, lest the whole land fall into harlotry, we'll find out, and the land become full of lewdness. And this is basically what happens in life as um, one should teach the their daughters uh, to be a, a, in a reference or a respect to their gender, uh, not to... We all have a purpose in life, after all, uh, and one should uh, not lessen others, in a sense. We find out by doing these things, the whole society as a whole falls away. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. You shall keep my Sabbaths, or these rests, these days that are separated, sanctified, of course, the Lord gives us a list of them. We have a Sabbath every, it's on Saturday. We'll just go ahead and get it straight. The Shabbos, the seventh day, of course, that's the day of rest. It finishes everything. And in the same understanding are the Sabbaths, as we'll find out. Uh, there will be three of them set throughout the year, and the Lord has established them. Uh, the uh, Passover, the Festival of Weeks, and as well, Day of Atonement. Uh, that leads into the Festival of Sukkoth, the, the Festival of Booths. 31 reverence uh, and and reverence this sanctuary is to have some respect for these things the Lord has sanctified and separated of course we find out all the Lord asked was that you remember him from time to time 31 turn you not unto the ghost nor unto the familiar spirits seek them not out to be defiled by them I am the Lord your God turn you not unto ghosts well, we'll find out there's those that do that practice sorceries and definitions. My friends, don't turn unto these familiar spirits. These ones that think they can talk to ghosts. Don't seek out. Don't seek, not them, don't seek them out. Don't defile yourself. Don't be an idiot. I am the Lord your God. Have some common sense. Hashem gives you common sense from the beginning. Uh... The dead are just that, my friends. They're dead. If they exist, my in in uh, it will be within your understanding. And there's no other place given here on earth for the dead to exist, uh, unless we go talk in a figurative sense. Then sometimes we wonder if we don't walk among them constantly. Thirty-two. You shall rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall rise up before the hoary head. Have some respect for the aging person. 
Uh, you know, there's a lot of times today there's little little respect in life, little respect in the world. Uh, to honor the face of the old man, to have a little respect. Uh, you know, you may not agree, but you can listen. There's no harm in that. They have earned their say, you might say, in the world. And you may not think so at this time. But when you get old and feeble and your day comes, believe me, if you're lucky, you you will learn to have some fear as well of of God. I am the Lord and the existing one and everywhere. You never know, my friend, the uh, well, when we face the adverse one constantly. We we get adverse to the understanding of God and think we know it all. Thirty-four, the stranger that sojourns with you shall be unto you as a home born among you. You shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The stranger that sojourns with you. Oh, this about anybody that comes to sojourn. As, as we know, we are all sojourners here, my friend. And it's those that have sojourned with you. Those that want to be part of Hashem's family, be part of the understanding, be part of that knowledge, have a little bit of 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 strength, stand up a little bit, not responsible for the cell. Uh, these, this shall be unto you just like a homeborn just like anybody else that's born there. We'll find out. You shall love him just like you love yourself. You know, that you're going to treat your neighbor just like you want to be treated. You were strangers in the land of Egypt, and you can remember how they treated you there. We wouldn't want them to cry out unto the Lord now, would we? Because we know the Lord is merciful. 35. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment in meat yard and weight or in measure you shall do no unrighteousness and we could just put a period right there but we're talking about in judgment we're talking about in meat yard that's of course meat yard is a standard in a sense in, in setting up a rule you know you set up a rules but then you, they say well these are exceptions to that they don't have to go by that rule they'll go by this rule got a different weight a different measure they get this much these guys get this much they don't work that don't work you're commanded not to do these things everything is just everything's righteous it doesn't matter who they are i don't care if they're walking barefoot or wearing a crown the, the weight goes out the same 36 just balances just weights a just default and a just hand shall you have i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Just balances. Everybody gets treated fairly. Everybody's equal in a sense. Just weights. At your measures and at your scales you weigh it out with. It's all equal. A just ephah, a just hen. A ephah was something that was used to measure a dry measure. Uh, and a hen was something that was used to measure a liquid measure. You know, there's an equal balance of everything. Uh, the uh, the dry measures and the liquid measures that which moistens as well. You shall ha- and you shall have these just weights. Uh, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The one who exists, the strength and this power and this might who brought you out of that land of graves, that place where these things exist, these unjust balances and these unjust weights. It was the Lord who gave you the understanding, my friend, who separated you in the beginning as one. He said that he wanted to observe his laws and observe his ordinances. 37, and you shall observe all my statutes and all my ordinances and do them. I am the Lord, and you shall observe all my statutes. These these examples even, these as, along these lines, these ordinances, not that you have to. We'll find out at any time you can do what you want. But the Lord wants you to be just. The Lord wants you to be righteous and holy as the Lord is holy. Let's move forward. Leviticus chapter 20. Turn and return. 